Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the DSUM function in Microsoft Access to calculate the previous 30 days sales totals. And of course, using the same technique and the same function, you can calculate whatever range of sales totals you want. So let's see how it works. Before we get started with DSUM, I want you to know how to use the DLOOKUP function. DSUM is the cousin of DLOOKUP. They're all very similar, but DLOOKUP is the easiest one to learn first if you've never done any of the D functions. There's DLOOKUP, DSUM, DMAX, DMIN, the whole bunch of them. Okay, so go watch DLOOKUP if you've never used DLOOKUP before. This free video, it's on my website, it's on my YouTube channel. There's the link, go watch it. Okay, okay. So here I am in a slightly modified version of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website. I made a little bit of a change though. For those of you who know this database, I added an order total field right here. Okay, normally we have order T, we have order details. We have all the, the line items for each order and you add these up to get your order total. But to make this lesson simpler, I just simply added an order total field. Pretend this exists, okay? Okay, so. Here's a list of each of my orders, right? The customer who placed that order, and here's the order date. Now, today is September 13th, 2022. So the last 30 days should be everything from this order on, okay? Now, I like it as a barometer of my sales. Whenever I log onto my database, the first thing I see right here is a little summary field showing me, hey, what are our sales for the last 30 days? How are we doing, right? So let's put that in a text box right here on our main menu. All right, before we do that, let's get a little bit of information here. I'm gonna pop up my notepad. I love using my notepad as a programmer, as an access developer, I use notepad constantly. Now, DSUM is just like DLOOKUP, all right? If you watch the DLOOKUP video, DSUM takes three parameters, three bits of information, just like DLOOKUP takes it takes what field are you looking up right what where is it coming from the where the table or the query and then the how right the criteria how are you getting your information so we need to know the field in this case we're looking up order total the table is order t all right and the criteria is the order date is going to be right 30 days ago would be greater than or equal to the current date right minus 30 that's how you figure that out if you don't know how to use date criteria in your queries or in your functions like this, go watch this video on date criteria. Okay, so now I can set this notepad aside. I'm just gonna move it off to the side over here, off the window there so you can't see it. We can close this now. And let's put a text box right there with my DSUM in it. All right, design view, I'll just copy this guy, copy, paste, All right? Change the label, last 30 days sales. And then the text box itself, Let's give it a name, sales 30 days. Okay, let's make the format as currency. And then the control source is where the function's gonna go. I'm gonna hit Shift F2 to zoom in so you can see us better. Let's get rid of that date function out of there. All right, that's why I have my notepad handy so now I can see what these are gonna be for my DSUM. Okay, so it's gonna be equals DSUM, that's the function. Now just like, well, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's not case sensitive. It doesn't matter if you capitalize it or not. All right, the first bit of information is what am I looking up? What field? I'm looking up the order total. In other words, sum all of the order total fields. Okay. Actually, technically, it's sum the order total field from all of the records that match this criteria, if you really want to be technical about it. All right, where are we getting our data from? Order T. You could use a query if you wanted to. Okay. And then what's the criteria? Well, the order date is going to be greater than or equal to date minus 30, just like that. Okay, hit okay. Let's save it. Control S, save it, close it, and open the form back up again. I always like to close and reopen my forms. Okay, there we go. And it works. It looks good. Couple of minor things, though. The first thing I want to mention is, although this is technically correct and this will work, it doesn't always work to put functions like that inside the criteria string. So I don't like writing it like this. Because later on, especially when you get into VB programming, sometimes that doesn't work. So I'm going to take that date minus 30 and move it outside of the string like this. Watch this. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to start off with a pound sign. Because if you're going to put an actual exact date in here, you have to put it inside of pound signs. Like 2022-1023, for example. All right, that's the way that you reference actual dates inside your function. So we have to have those. 
All right, so again, I'm going to get rid of this and put closed quotes and date minus 30 and the open quotes again. So it's going to take, take the date minus 30, put that date in there, and put that whole thing inside the string. See how that works? This is a little more confusing, but this is guaranteed to work in every situation. All right, putting the date function inside the criteria doesn't always work. And this little bit here with the ampersands in there, that's called string concatenation. That's just putting multiple things together in the same string. If you want to learn more about that, there's a video for you. Uh, these are all free videos on my website, on my YouTube channel. Feel free to watch them whenever you want. Okay, so now I can hit OK, save it, Control S, close it, open it back up again. And you can see it's still working. But again, this is just my preferred way of writing that function. Now, one thing you'll notice is that sales figure is kind of high. I've been waiting on that one sale to come in. And you know what? It's not paid yet. Look at that. That $10,000 sale from September 10th isn't paid yet. That would be nice to know. I don't want to reflect that in my actual sales totals, right? So how do we specify multiple criteria in here? Well, let's go back to our function. Okay, right at the end here, we're going to say space and put another criteria, right? Is paid equals true. You can put as many criteria as you want in there. Well, pretty much, almost as much. Within reason. I've never run into the limit. I'm sure there is one. <laughs> okay, let's hit OK. Let's save it again, close it, open it up, and that's a more realistic number. While we're at it, it would be handy to see how many unpaid sales we have, right? Get our accounting department on these people, right? Start sending out some accounts receivable and do what you got to do. Last 30 days sales, let's go. How about unpaid? 30 days sales, right? Let's change this to unpaid 30 days. And this is just a minor modification to our function we already have here. This is going to be is paid equals false. All right, and we can see what we have to still collect some money for. Save it, close it, and let's open it back up. I just have little buttons up here, by the way, on my quick launch toolbar to run the different forms that I have. And I explain how to do that in my blank database video, which is where I show you how to build this tech help free template. You'll find links to all of this stuff, by the way, down below in the description below the video, if you want to find where all this stuff is. All right, but there you can see my unpaid 30-day sales is showing up right there. Now I know I got to get on the phone and call that person and find out, hey, where's your check? <laughs> now let's say his check does come in the mail the next day. Oh, glory, joy, right? Okay, let's mark that paid in the order table. Now this isn't going to automatically update itself. It'll refresh whenever you close and reopen the form. If you want to refresh it, you can click on the refresh all button up here, or you can press F5 on your keyboard. That'll also refresh it. Or you can make yourself a little refresh button. I got different videos on that. But essentially, now I'm seeing blank there. I don't like blanks. I like zeros because if I want to do other calculations based on that field, that's a null value. That's hard to deal with. So let's make sure that if this value is null, we stick a zero in there. To do that, we're going to use the NZ function. If you've never used the NZ function, here's a video on it. I got a video on pretty much everything, right? NZ is just a cool little function we're going to use to wrap around other functions and say, hey, if this thing evaluates to null, put a zero there or whatever other value you want. So NZ and then parentheses around this whole thing, comma, zero. So if that DSUM evaluates to null, put a zero there. Okay, this is very handy in financial functions, especially. Let's do it for both of these. Just in case you have no sales in this period, you don't want to see a null value there. Comma, zero. Let's do that. You can use it for date values, too. You could say if the date returns a null value, you can set it to some older date, like January 1st, 1990, or something like that. String values, you can set equal to empty strings. All kinds of things you can do. NZ is one of my favorite functions. And now I get a zero there. So that is pretty much, in a nutshell, how you use the DSUM function. I cover it in a lot more detail in my Access Expert Level 11 class. Here it is on my website, Access Expert Level 11. You'll find a link to this down below. All kinds of stuff covered in this one. Tons and tons of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. Lots and lots of tons of stuff. <laughs> one thing I do also cover in this class is aggregate queries. Now, I generally recommend you try to keep your DSUM and DLOOKUP and DMAX and all those kinds of functions. I recommend you keep those in single forms or in reports. Because if you use them inside of queries or continuous forms where there's lots and lots of records, the DSUM function or the DLOOKUP function or whatever it is has to run for each record that's displayed. 
So it tends to slow your database down a lot. So if this is something that you're doing for a bunch of records at a time, I recommend using something called an aggregate query that is covered in Access Expert 11, of course, and it's also covered in this free tech help video. I got lots and lots of free videos and I got my full tutorials. You can come and watch if you want to learn more. My full lessons cover everything in a lot more depth, of course, and you don't have to bounce around between all kinds of different videos. It's step one, step two, step three, step four, and so on. And while I'm at it, I do have another tech help video that might be of interest to you. This one's called Making Dashboard Forms. It's basically the same thing that I just showed you using some D sum functions and some other ones. And I show you how to build a dashboard with some charts and stuff on your main menu to show your annual sales, your monthly sales, and a bunch of other figures. So check this one out as well. It's a free video. It's on my YouTube channel. It's on my website. But that is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.